ISO 27001 Annex A 8.20 Network Security. Let's look at how we're going to implement this when it comes to our ISO 27001 certification. What I can't do on this blog is teach you an entire profession, right? Network security, network management is a profession in its own right. What I'm going to start off by saying is you are going to require the help and the support of professionals who are trained and experienced in this area, right? I, network security is a dark art to me, right? I come from a technical background, but to me, it's a dark art. So we need to make sure that we are building and deploying our networks and that we are implementing security by default and design within that network implementation. So whatever it is that you are doing when it comes to your configuration of networks, use a professional and rely on everything that they say. What is it that 27001 wants and what is it that we can do as a GRC professionals and audit as an implement as well? Let's start off with the definition. The definition of this particular control says networks and network devices should be secured, managed and controlled to protect information in systems and applications. So what we're doing here is we're looking at making sure that we're configuring our networks, we're configuring our devices. We're looking back at the configuration management control that we've already got, and we're making sure that we're doing that in the most secure manner. This is going to need somebody who is trained and is qualified and is experienced within the particular network technologies that you've got, and you are heavily going to rely upon them. Through belts and braces, of course, we can do things like testing of that. We can bring in independent verification of that. We can bring in pen testers of that, and we can bring in internal monitoring and quality management tools that look at the way that the network is configured and try and identify vulnerabilities for us. But I keep saying it, I'm saying it again, bringing a network professional. What I am looking for from a 27,001 point of view, first of all, is documentation. I want documentation and you need to implement documentation around your network and your network devices. Be that we're starting off with basic build documentation. What is the standard configuration of the network and the network devices within it? Then what we're looking at are network diagrams. What are the network and architectural diagrams so that you can describe and articulate what your network is in a very clear manner to varying levels of understanding uh, of people uh, and what their requirement of understanding is of you. So it may be the case that you have a high level network diagram, a high level diagram that shows the interconnection between the networks you've got. It may be that you then break that down further and further into detailed network diagrams that sets out things like uh, address ranges, IP addresses, and it is going to be the case that along with the other controls that we've got, that you are running and have an asset register of the devices that are within your network. If it is the case that your network is a virtual network or your network is in the cloud, then you are going to have documentation that is appropriate to that. But you need to be able to answer the question, show me what your network is, show me the interdependencies between your networks, show me how you are controlling your network, show me how you are securing your network, show me how you are restricting access to it and all of the things that go around that. So we want full documentation. Where possible, we want documentation that covers our network, our devices and our network security. We also need roles and responsibilities. Within our organisation, there are roles and responsibilities that people have. You need to understand what they are and you need to document them. Who is responsible for what? Have you segregated and separated out the roles of the network design from the network implementation? Are there different layers and levels within that? Who are the admins, the global admins? Who are the privileged users and with the privileged access? So here what we're going to do is place heavy reliance, as always, on pre-existing controls, controls that we've already covered. We've already covered access controls. and We've already covered privileged user access. We've already covered in the last uh, tutorial the use of privileged utility programs. So we're placing heavy reliance on controls that we've already got. We're documenting our network, we're documenting our roles and responsibilities, we're having clarity on who does what, and we're ensuring segregation of duty to remove conflicts of interest within that. We're also placing reliance on the logging and monitoring control that we've already touched on. Logging and monitoring is about making sure that we have appropriate logging and monitoring of our environment so that we can seek out where there are anomalies. We can try and catch things either before they happen 
through trend analysis or as they're happening so that we can respond to them in a way that is going to mitigate, reduce or eliminate the risk of a data breach occurring. So you're looking at the control and you're going back to that on logging and monitoring. How are we logging? How are we monitoring? How are we reviewing our network? Have we implemented additional support technologies such as HIDs and NIDs? Have we put other things in there uh, that we need to, again, document and articulate and then include within our operational processes? We're including in here technical considerations. So we are speaking with our technical teams. We do not know as 27,001 professionals how to set up a network. I don't know how to seg segregate that. I don't know how to virtualize that to meet the requirements of the business. What I do know is that as part of that design process, information security should have been considered and you should be able to evidence that. I do know that as part of the design and documentation that technical security uh, and information sh security should be within that. So I can seek evidence from you of how you have done that. And I can look at things that we've discussed like configuration management. Are you removing ports? Are you removing common known vulnerabilities, common services? Have you removed default passwords? Have you removed default user accounts? Do you have the controls, the compensating controls that you hear me refer to, the controls that sit around this control that limit and reduce the risks that are associated with it? When it comes to virtual networks, everything is in, right? So there is a standard. Yeah, I'm reading it, right? There is a standard that covers virtual networks, ISO TS23167. I don't know, I've not read it and I don't implement to it, but there is guidance out there on uh, how you deploy networks, how you deploy ne uh, virtual networks and how you uh, secure them. So be sure to be reaching out to additional uh, resources as you need them. What is that auditor going to check? And I've just been through it, but what is that auditor going to check? I'm going to check your documentation, right? I want to see that you've documented your network. I want to see your configuration and your build documents, your default build documents. I want to see documentation around your approvals and your access, the documentation around the compensating controls. Can I show, can you show, can I see a network diagram? Can I see lists of devices that are operating virtual or not? Can I see their configurations? Can I see logs are being generated? Can I see what those logs can say, contain? Can I see how you manage change management and configuration change management? Is there documentation that supports that? Do you understand what the roles and responsibilities are that you have and that you need? And is there a segregation of duty within that? And can you show me that? They're also going to want to look and make sure that the network has been implemented appropriately. Now, this will come down to the auditor. I always say play the auditor, not the standard. It's going to be reliant on the expertise and knowledge and history of that auditor. But if they have a background, a technical background or a background in network security, then they are going to be asking you some very specific technical questions. There is nothing here to be worried about. There is nothing to be worried about because you're using professionals and professionals in the environment know exactly what it is that they need to do. So you are going to be relying on them and come the audit. You're going to be involving them in the audit uh, so that they can answer these questions for you. Your job is to make sure that all of that admin and GRC documentation is in place and that there are no brainers. So the third thing the audit is going to look for is evidence of internal audit. Did you do internal audit and what level of audit did you do? Did you interview uh, people that have roles and responsibilities? Did you seek evidences of their documentation? Did you walk through their processes with them? And can you evidence that? So that's what the external auditor is going to look at. So recap, network security. Yes, we're configuring it. Yes, we're making sure that the network professionals are doing what they need to do, locking things down, implementing encryption where in the way they need to. Yes, they are placing heavy reliance on the other Annex A controls, just applying them uh, to networks. And yes, we're making sure that we've got documentation in place. So nothing to be scared of. If you are looking for a tutorial on how to implement network security, there are better professionals out there uh, than me. And you can search that on YouTube. My job here is to show you how to pass the audit and how to conduct the audit internally so that you're going to have the best success when it comes to your ISO certification. My name is Stuart Barker, author of the Ultimate ISO 27001 Toolkit, and we're going to continue our journey now through the last, well, yeah, we're nearly in the final leg, right? So we're working through the last of those Annex A controls. So for now, peace out.